So, with all these slicey boats, um, I'm gonna drop a link to your Insta and your YouTube channel because you're you're pushing it hard in the slot, the half slice and the full slice spot, and like I see you like splatting to the point of pin and then like wiggle 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 out of a pin and pop out and sometimes <laughs> it's all good but you know you've also lost a friend this year too yeah. so yeah where are we on the safety out aspect i mean i i love taking slices out and all that stuff but i do it in rivers that where i know every square inch of where i'm hitting and i paddle it from dead low to this crazy high and I yeah. can still get surprised and still jam about in an undercut I didn't even know is there. Yeah, and, and and on that note, you know, I as far as like full slice, so you got your full slice and your half slice. Your half slice would be your party brap, your antics, your ripper, your um, your axioms. I consider those half slice. And then you got your full slice, which is the current, you know, newer models like the Mixmaster and the home slice and all the old school boats i'm not a big fan of the old school boats because of the fact that the cockpit rims are a lot smaller it's like they were designed with the volume more inward you look at boats like the home slice and the uh mix master they've got wider cockpit rims but still if you if you notice a lot of things you don't see me out running like hard class five in those I mean, even like doing like green and things like that, I'm still walking like in my slice. Now, the half slice is a different animal because it's got the breakaway bulkhead in it. I, I paddle on antics, if anyone doesn't know. I paddle the antics mostly, and it's got nice big volume in the front. It's got a wide cockpit rim. It's easy to get out of. It's got a breakaway bulkhead. The same way I felt just as safe in like the Axiom, the Party Brap, the Ripper. They're all more, they're more creek worthy. And and then they're able to throw down when they need to. Now, obviously, there's a point where I get away from the half slice. And for me, this is me personally. My point is it's not necessarily like these, you know, you could go do like Thompson talks away even in an antics. I'd be totally fine in it. But where I don't like the boats like the antics is a river like what we have in the Smokies called like West Prong. It's a lot of vertical pour over ledges. So you don't get a lot of speed off of these ledges. And you use that stern volume to get away from things, and you're going to get your ass kicked. It's like if you take like an Axiom, Antics, yeah, I mean, unless you're a really, really good paddler that kind of knows this coming up. But I, I, I get away from those boats on those really tight, tight, like um, vertical ledge drop runs where it's like, you know, ledge, ledge, ledge. And it's like pour over ledge because then if I come down to my stern loads, I basically – load and just go up and over and get in a side surf and I can't get out but in a phantom or nomad it loads and then shoots you out that pumpkin stick shoots you out where you get away from things like that that's where I personally will start getting away from um, from the half slice but I mean I, I really like the boats and you know I like uh, seeing what they're capable of basically within within like safety yeah my, my notes on that would be um Realize they're not made with safety features because we now take safety features in creek boats 100% for yeah. granted. I forget they're there. Yeah. Um, so realize that the features aren't there and that the plastic is old and flexy and prone yeah. to break if you're rocking an old boat. Um, yep. And also that part of that – a lot of the safety just comes down to where and how much volume you have. So – even if you're a really good paddler and you're accounting for everything, it's that whole, yeah. like, when things go wrong in paddling, you're on the beginning of an avalanche, and it's just going to keep going, right? So something that isn't a problem when you have volume to keep you high, when you don't have mm -hmm. it, is a crisis. So uh, no matter what you do or, or how you pick it, there's always that that risk. Yeah, it's it's – it's it's kind of like that assumption, you know. You kind of like take that risk, and you you kind of evaluate your your paddling skills and your group skills. And you know, there's that, you know, you, I've seen it where guys have been paddling like boats they really should not be in at that river or whatever. But you know what? It, as it, it is what it is. And you know, I've I've even voiced I've watched. You can kind of watch people. You probably too. You see a guy paddling, and you're like, wow, he does not belong out here. 
And then and then I'm noticed I'm like, he's in an RPM out here. And I was like, he really does not belong out here in that boat. And then you're like, wow, you and then, you know, I, I'll try to say something in like a friendly way. I try not to be like, you know what, you suck. You need to get off the river. <laughs> you know, you're like, hey, man, you know, you, you might want to try to like step back and, and look for even an older creek boat, even an older creek boat compared to a, you know, a, a new slice boat. You know, if a guy got like in a, in a Nomad 8.5, which is still a great boat, you know, and, and then I'm like, you can't go wrong. And you could find those all day long for, you know, $200, $300 with a crack in them and weld it up and paddle the shit out of it. I think it's really interesting how we have a huge, huge problem with that in our sport. Um, and yet in like surfing, there is no hesitation to walk up to somebody and be like, you don't belong here. You're putting everyone else at risk. <laughs> Go home. And then if you do paddle yeah. out, and I'm not advocating this, they beat your ass in the parking lot. They Savage. beat the shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> they go trash your car and beat the shit out of you. Come back, you got four flat tires. Right. Now, the surf culture, man, those it's guys totally are brutal. Different. No, no, no. I've done surf kayaking. Um, oh. I'm not big into surfing, but I went out surf kayaking. And I've harsh. avoided them because – I've heard stories of them just trashing cars. Like you took my wave, man. <laughs> and it's like, but it no, you, you got a point there. You, you got a point. The, the surf culture that local. they'll come to the point of violence. Yeah. It took me three years of being a local at a break. And I'm talking two sessions a day for four to six months every day. And at some point I was accepted, but people who weren't from that break would come in and be like, oh, my way into the club is to sh just go after that guy. It's like yeah. it never ended. <laughs> it's like you got to do that hazing. You got to yeah. go through it. Everybody's got to go through it. No, I get that. I get it, man. But, you know, I, I, what's, what scares me right now is that um, – and it's, it's our jobs as sponsored paddlers. I mean, we're supposed to make whatever's new hot. You know, we're influencers. Yeah. And so we had an episode here um, where a paddler who's – he's one of those paddlers who's always looking for a hardware solution to a software problem. Yeah. Um, so, you know, he was looking for the next boat, the next boat, the next boat, and he wound up dropping a – you know, it's not stout, but it could be stout if you're upside down – a triple drop. And just doing it on his head because he was, you know, he should have been in his creaker. If he was in his creaker, he would have been fine. And yeah, uh, yeah he, he destroyed, went right through a sweet. Now, granted, sweet full faces are now made out of plastic, um, but he, like, you could fit your fist into his helmet. Wow. Wow. But, uh, yeah. Now, we, the, we have to have a way of, of having that conversation with people to be like, hey, homie, it's, it's when it's easy that you bring the toys in. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, that, that's always like, you, you know, you want to you want to try to, like, keep everybody safe. You want to I mean, I've definitely had to pull some people aside and be like, man, you might want to just walk out of here. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you need to just end it right here. Seriously. And I mean, I've advised that like, no, it's not going to get easier. You know, I've done that. You've probably done that. I've, I, and, you know, now with social media, I've met up with people and then I could tell in the first five rapids i'm like this guy don't belong here and i'm right. like hey and i mean i'm like dude you know you're out of your element and and, and that was more in the past you know when i was doing a lot of smokies laps i'd run into people up there a lot too and you're super committed where you are like i'm blessed i would say that we can actually take someone down the moose and be like well mm -hmm. it's class two three and then a pond and then gnar a pond class two three I did notice that up there. Yeah, you guys have a, you've got an in interesting geograph of how it works. You'll you'll have like a hard rapid and then like a big flat water section. It's like that drop pool type where you know I'm sure there are like creek runs, but it's like on those dam control runs you've got those where there's that break in the middle, right? And guys can take it's out. It's just if our they need geology to. through and through. We have the weirdest yeah. geology. Like if you go to the other side and you're on the Tug Hill, it's like. All right, cow pasture, cow pasture, everything's cool. You see a pine tree, and like the skirts come off, and you're grabbing for because pine trees mean that the rock yeah. changes, and it goes like this, you know? Yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, so we we luck out, but um, there definitely are. I mean, it it happens for us, 
but it, it's definitely something as a culture we're just bad with. I mean, in the same way that we're bad with, uh, like, dirtbagging has gone way, way too far. Uh, we, we, we have not figured this one out at all. And we're going to have to if we keep yeah. pushing it. Because Slicey Buds are definitely the rebirth of our sport. We're going back to our glory days. Why we didn't think well, of this years ago, I have no idea. But Yeah, it's, it's funny because um... – you know, when, when on the whole slicey boat thing, and you know, I I'm a big Akoe fan anyway. I mean, I love the Akoe, and um, you know, the only two real slices, well, I guess the the low key. So you got the low key, the home slice, and the mix master. And to me, I think the mix master is more of a full on slicey. It's weird. I, I paddled all three, so I've been in all three of those boats, and it's like they've all do something a little different. I really wanted Dagger to do a slicey boat because we all know Dagger's lineage of slicey boats i mean oh, yeah. with the ultrafuge the centrifuge you know the egos and the ids you know they've got a great slicey boat lineup in the past and i tried and i tried man I, I really tried to get them to do a slicey boat and i just kept getting pushed aside on that and i was like there's a wave coming and this is the difference between because i'm out there and i'm out there and i'm watching it's so crazy you'd go like the akoe and you would see you know 40 slicey boats and they would be cramming themselves down. And I'm like, they're now what we know now how to make boats more balanced, more comfortable, better outfitting. I mean, a lot of these people are just sitting on like an old roto molded seat, no hip pads and right. feet crammed down in a little, you don't really need that. And I think this new, this new age of slicey boats, you know, have they sold? I don't really know. Oh, I got um, you. I got you right here. So what I would say is I totally get your perspective. Got it. Um, from our perspective, it was like the, the low key came out and um, la nothing happened. Like they were still there up until last Moose Fest. The same ones. Yeah. You know, and we wound up giving them away and we had this whole internal struggle of like if we wait six months. They're going to be cool again, and we're going to be sitting on vintage, or we can cash out on a losing horse yeah. now and send it to the glue factory. You yeah. know? Um, same thing with the Veyroon. Like, the Veyroon was worse because it was like a one and a half slice, you know? like Yeah. But I think, I think I'm think i super excited. Like, to your point, like, let's put some modern cockpit rims on them. Let's, put, let's figure out how to make these things safe. And, uh, as much as we can, you know, as yeah. much as we can, as far as a low volume boat, you know, that's all you can really do. Honestly. I mean, you can do what you can. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, you, you, you know, better back band, better hip pads. I mean, it's basically more comfortable still. I wouldn't recommend, you know, going out and dropping, you know, the stouts and, and slicey boats. I'm not a big fan of that, but you know, well, what? and, and realize mean, the guys that are pros, they can do that stuff. And by the way, they're probably limping for a couple days after, but that doesn't make the edit, you know? <laughs> and when they, uh, when they peach on, when they peach on that Loki and it folds on their ankles, then they can't move for a week. And yeah, we're that cutting doesn't them make, out that doesn't, it make later. The edit. doesn't make the edit. Just no, cause there's no structure. There's no structure up there. Um, yeah. So the, you're, you know, you're not, you peach on one of those. It's going to let you know real quick. Oh yeah. Yeah, for real. I mean, that's the only reason you don't see me out there in a, you know, in an old school dagger midnight or something. We got stacks of them in all the college clubs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Guys are trying to start to roll. They're learning to roll in them. Rolling them. Yeah, they are. There's no doubt. Um, you know, it's it's just crazy to me how, how we've come full circle on it. But, uh, you know. We'll, we'll just see where we are in another year or two. For all I know, in another year or two, the next thing will be huge. 